Hello everyone, welcome to a new game. This is USB stick found in the grass. Now normally, of course, what I tend to uh, do on this channel, um, other than of course all the instructory type stuff that I do just for fun, I like to look at hacking themed games and um, see how true to life they are and how much fun they are. And uh, generally speaking, they're not that much fun, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, but I wanted to branch out a little bit uh, because my background is actually, I'm a computer criminologist uh, and computer investigator, uh, which means that cybersecurity is what I teach. It's what I've done it uh, for decades. But um, what I'm really interested in and what I research is digital forensics and computer investigation and cyber sociology and criminology and all that kind of good stuff. So I was looking out to see, you know, are there any games that are kind of along those lines? Do we have any like forensic games um, specifically with computer forensics? And I came across the USB stick found in the grass <clears throat> and I have uh, no idea uh, if that really fits the bill, but it seems to from its description. So what we have here, released January 29th, 2021, developed by Marcin Borkowski, uh, published by BPP, and the description says, A forensic challenge. Find out who the owner of the USB stick was and reconstruct their story. So it sounds perfect. Uh, let's go with the longer description here. It's a bit difficult to classify the USB stick found in the grass as a game. It's more of a combination of a literary work and a forensic puzzle. If you like, uh, if you liked a normal lost phone or her story, you will probably like the USB stick found in the grass. Uh, so there's a couple of other games like a normal lost phone sounds like it might also be a good uh, example. I might need to go look at that. Uh, you are given a virtual representation of a USB stick that was found at a scene of a possible crime, and you play a police officer trying to solve a case with very limited information. You are not given any tools to do so, but you can use any tools you have on your computer. The USB stick found in the grass is not subject to any intrinsic limitations on which the game is built. Quite the opposite, the USB stick found in the grass is a close to the real thing, is as close to the real thing as possible. The USB drive you will be investigating is indistinguishable from a real one. The tools you will be using are real. If something looks like it can be checked, it can be checked. If something can't be checked, it wasn't our intention. It's simply the result of a built-in technological implementation or limitation. Uh, your job is to find what it is all about, if the stick is in any way related to what have happened, and if anything happened. Um, sometimes... Uh, and remember, sometimes it is the journey that is more important than the destination. So, uh, yes, it sounds awesome. Or, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about it now. Um, yeah, it sounds exactly like what I was looking for. Um, and it looks like the developer, uh, maybe Polish, I'm seeing here on the screen, I have a, a choice between English and Polski. Um, and if so, then, uh, you know, good for you, Mr. Burkowski, uh, because your description with the exception of the last sentence, is perfect English. Uh, the only only error there was is the last sentence, which is, your job is to find out what it is all about, if the stick is in any way related to what have happened, and if anything happened. This should be has happened. But that's uh, you know, no, no judgment at all here uh, from me. That's very, very good. Okay. Um, so, uh, I just launched the game here, and um, what I am greeted with, uh, I'm looking also here at uh, the, uh, let me move this over here, um, the images from the game, and our job is to find out what happened. So, here we have um, the USB stick, um, here it is being recorded somewhat in situ. So, in the investigation phase of a digital uh, forensic investigation uh, is when you go out to the scene and you recover potential evidence sources. We wouldn't record it like this. Um, I see what they're going for here. So what they have is it looks like they have some kind of an evidence bag, um, which has been set under. So the, the USB stick, which was found in the grass, was picked up a evidence placard placed underneath it, a evidence bag placed underneath it, and then it was placed back down. That is not recording in situ. We would record it exactly as we found it before we touch it at all. Um, we would get an evidence bag ready. We may put an evidence placard in the shot nearby in order to establish, um, in order to place it in the scene with other shots for scene reconstruction. Um, 
and also it gives us the benefit of giving us a, a known object to compare in terms of size if we need to do that later on with the images. But under no circumstances would we pick the evidence item up to place placards underneath it and then record it because then it's there's no point anymore at that point. We've moved it and we didn't record it before we moved it. Uh, we also have uh, this right here. So this is supposed to be... Uh, no, 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 no. Don't you do that. Don't you do that now. Uh, so this is supposed to be a forensic write blocker. It is not. Uh, this appears to be one of those uh, multifunction USB SD card port things. And they've just printed out a label that says write blocker prototype uh, version uh, 8.89 USB 2.0. Drew Kiar's lab, I think is what that says. But forensic write blockers are a real thing, and they don't look that different from this. Um, a forensic write blocker is a hardware device which we connect evidence items to, and then we connect the write blocker to a forensic endpoint, and then that way the evidence isn't accidentally or intentionally uh, changed when we're examining it, right? It basically mounts the device to the system in read-only mode, and it's a hardware write blocker, meaning there's nothing that we can do uh, to uh, to change it out of read-only status, either, either intentionally or unintentionally. It is possible to configure forensic endpoints. Forensic endpoints are, are already essentially basically PCs uh, that have been specially configured and may contain hardware components that facilitate the forensic process. The configuration of a forensic endpoint uh, means that uh, it should already be mounting devices in read-only mode, which can be done with the simple change in the registry with Windows. Um, but it also means like, um, we would also do things like turning off autoplay and, well, there's a, I'm not going to go through the whole configuration. There's, there's a lot of things, um, that we, we do to a forensic endpoint in order to turn it into a forensic endpoint, but still the use of hardware write blockers is still, um, arguably a, a best practice, uh, certainly the best practice if you have one available. So, um, the, the other hardware components that you'd have in a forensic, uh, endpoint is essentially just a shitload of, um, external cards to give you every port you can imagine under the sun, if possible. So, uh, forensic endpoints will have firewire ports and they'll have USB ports, you know, USB one all the way up to three. Uh, they'll have, um, um, optical drives, they'll have, you know, and then of course you're also going to have attached to your forensic endpoint some kind of central SAN uh, to act as an evidence repository. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can configure a forensic lab and, um, you know, if you have multiple endpoints, then having a single evidence repository and then a backup system for that is absolutely essential. All right, so and it looks like we're going to be using our actual um, machine here with our Windows Explorer in order to do that. Um, what do we have? Anything else here? We got images to examine. This is going to be fun. All right, yeah, this is my jam. Let's do this. All right. <clears throat> This program adds an additional drive to the system. To do so, it has to be launched with elevated rights. This means that you will be shown the UAC prompt every time you start the game. If the new drive window doesn't pop up after the trailer, your Windows is most likely set up to ask what to do with the disk content. Find the autoplay dialog box that appeared, blah, blah, blah. So, um, by the way, when you're becoming certified uh, for forensic work, uh, depending on the... If, you're, if you have a certification that's decent and all... And there's a lot of really shitty certifications out there in the world of cybersecurity, including forensics. Uh, and what I mean by shitty is I mean ones that don't actually demonstrate competency. It's like you pay a couple grand, you take a class, and then you take a test, and then you get your certification. I hate those certifications, especially for forensics. Any decent forensic certification is going to require you to actually conduct an investigation and submit reports, which will then be adjudicated by people who work in the field and know what the hell they're talking about, who can certify you and say that this work is, is good enough to be certified, at least. Um, and so in order to do that, you have to go through what are known as digital corpus, which means um, simulated evidence, right? Um, and so what we're doing here is not unlike what I had to do to become certified in forensic work. So this is uh, good to see on Steam, I guess. Uh, actually, you know, hold on before we... Uh, before, before I move on too far, let me make sure I make note of this normal lost phone. All right, let's move on and okay.
And I'm just waiting for it to finish setup. Yeah. Um, a normal lost phone is a game about exploring the intimacy of an unknown person whose phone was found by the player. Hmm. That does sound intriguing. A little bit like a, a little bit uh, less like a forensic investigation, but still not unlike a forensic investigation. I am gonna have to wish list this. Oh, it's oh my god, it's only a dollar. What? Oh, and there's two versions. There's a normal lost phone and another lost phone. Laura's story. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's add to cart there. Hey, I'll spend a dollar fifty on two decent looking games. Setup's taking a little while longer than I thought, so I'm going to pause the video. And we're back. <laughs> right away, we get a phone call. Co tam? A witam pana inspektora. A co tutaj? A to ja zaraz pokażę. No, Maciuś, przywitaj się z panem inspektorem. No, to tak. Dzisiaj jest 6 czerwca, nie? No gdzieś pod koniec maja ktoś tutaj podobno widział, że może ktoś komuś jakąś krzywdę zrobił czy coś. I ktoś na górze sobie wymyślił, że my mamy dojść o co chodzi, nie? No to dochodzimy. Tydzień minął. Była akurat wolna ekipa z psem, to przyjechał ten wysoki Wojtek z psem, Kubą. To ten Kuba najpierw full pro pobiegał, powąchał, a potem ziewnął, obszał tutaj ten wiaduk, hmm. uwalił się jajkami do góry, żeby go po brzuchu podrapać. Tam zaraz, po tamtej stronie, jest przystanek autobusowy. Tutaj codziennie setka ludzi chodzi na skróty do domów. Trzy dni temu padało całą noc, wczoraj padało, to co on miał znaleźć, co on mógł wywąchać. Tyle, że się przewietrzył. My się też wietrzymy, tutaj ustalić coś mądrego to jest trudno. Ale dobre miejsce jest na relaks. Tu bylcy wiedzą. Tam leży paczka po chipsach, jakaś butelka po piwie, nie? Tam gdzieś dalej jakąś prezerwatywę po ruchaniu widziałem, nie? Maciuś znalazł jakiegoś pendrive'a, to może być jedyna rzecz, która jakaś tutaj nie na miejscu. To jak zdejmę odciski, to wyślę chłopakom do komputerowego. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I tyle. Now you're on your own, using Windows File Explorer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, excellent. Um, so they did record the USB drive in situ. I saw that. Um, the picture on uh, on Steam was not as they recorded it. Um, and now that I have a better picture of the uh, right blocker here, this, this is obviously not an actual right blocker. This is, uh, you can see here's the um, CFMD and SDMMC card, uh, the mini, uh, and well, so on, right? Uh, looks like we have three files on the drive, according to this post-it note. Um, let's see, we can actually pick things, so I can highlight the files, highlight the USB drive, change language. All right, so if I click on that, um, it has disappeared, so my guess is... It, it didn't mount any drive. Um, I also don't didn't get an autoplay or anything. <clears throat> Let me check. Um, okay. Oh. Check computer management. See if there's a disk waiting to be mounted. <sighs> Taking a while. Mm -mm -mm. Nope. Nope, there is no... No unmounted drives. Um, 
Let me check the game directory. Maybe it's there and we can just mount it that way. Steam, Steam apps, common USB found in the grass. Um, there it is. There's a VHD here. That is no doubt what we're supposed to be mounting. I'm going to need to mount that HD. So I'm going to have to get computer management back up, run as administrator, disk management. Say 4 gig VHD. Man, disk management takes it takes it's taking way too long. All right, action, attach VHD. I don't know. Browse there. I'm gonna mount it as read only. Read only. And Steam. Steam apps common USB stick found in the grass yeah HD and okay and it is now H at thirty two all right here we go uh is this yes what. I mean, this is it, but it's got installers on it for some reason. Apache Open Office, Calibre, Hugin Setup, II View, Perfect Effects, QuickTime Installer, and Scribus. We have directories, other books, Dear Diary, movies, PDF. Now, normally in this case, what I would obviously do is I would actually begin a forensic report. I would have begun it already. Um, I would begin a forensic report and um, start documenting it before I even thought about mounting it i would have already gotten the report started and and have cataloged um much of the evidence but uh, this is a game so we're going to treat it like a game and i'm not going to take it quite so seriously here um it forgive me for doing so that said i am going to take notes um so and it said that we can <clears throat> excuse me it said that we can use what's on our computer too and I, I don't know what forensic tools i actually have on this computer at home um I think I have autopsy, um, probably a couple of others. Um, so anyway, but first I'm going to, no, normally I would uh, begin by, uh, after beginning the report, the first thing I would do after mounting the drive normally would be to do uh, a, a drive inventory, which I would have one of my, um, my forensic suites. I would just have it dump a CSV file of the, um, indexed files, um, but I'm not doing that. Maybe I should. Maybe I should pull up autopsy and use that. I don't know. Did I spell that right? Factory. Yes, that's right. Uh, uh, I'm just going to record the directories. The rest of these I'll leave. All right, let's begin at the top with other empty, or I should say apparently empty. Books. We got Wizard Process. I don't speak Polish, so I don't know what that is. Lord Jim, Dear Diary, Pix, Dear Diary, ODT, and then there's the archives that were mentioned on the post note that we saw, which is probably also in the game files. Oh, did I close that directory? Oh, why did I do that? Wait, where is Windows Exp Oh, it's right there. Duh. Um, Steam, Steam apps, common, USB file grass. Okay, so keep this here as well. Um, yeah, this is what we saw. It says GUI A. What's GUI B? Oh, that's with all the highlights on it. Uh, GUI first run mask. Yep, that's what we saw before. Ask. There's our 
files, USB, and then the languages. Okay, that makes sense. The GUI mask is what is highlightable. Um, we have the videos here as well. I don't know. I'm starting to think maybe I should pull this up in autopsy. Would most people playing this game use autopsy? I don't know. Under movies, we have... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to... I I don't know what version I have here. 14. Uh, so 414 is a couple of... A couple of versions back. Um, but that's okay. It'll it'll do. Um, we got some torrents here. Blue is the warmest color. And under the skin. Which is not actually there, but we do have the uh, Yiffy torrents placard. And PDF. It's empty. And then we have the installers. And while Autopsy is launching, let's dig into PIC. All right, so we do have some pictures here. I do recognize the bridge. So Autopsy is here. Let's go to new case. Uh, and I think that 14 or 414, I think, is a little bit buggy but you know like all all versions of autopsy are a little bit buggy um it's okay we'll get through it it's gonna take a second for that to open um so we have some pictures to analyze we'll get into that what are these archives so we have file and a text file okay so it's password protected all right uh password protected for the second archive and the third archive also pass. So all these are password protected. So we will need to crack those. Open a new case autopsy, for God's sake. Uh, let's see. Do I have file analyzer? I do. File analyzer is another utility that I use for forensic work sometimes. It doesn't tell you anything that you can't get out of, excuse me, autopsy, but... Um, um, it was H, uh, dear diary, ODT. ODT is, uh, is the open office, uh, format. Uh, case name will be the U.S., what, what, what do they call it? Who's fit G. Who's fit G. Yes, I do. Yeah. Good enough. All right, while that's opening up, we'll go to file analyzer. I said I want to go to file analyzer while you're opening up. All right, let's start with, um, well, let's just go down the line here, hex. All right, so we have, it is open office. This is our file signature here, 5004B. Um, we, have a th uh, we have thumbnail, ENG. So we have an embedded thumbnail. It should, uh, oh, here we go. Images, bitmaps. So we do have something weird going on here. It's an open office document. I don't know if open office uh, typically makes these header changes and adds thumbnails when there are images embedded in the, in the document. Could be, I haven't opened the document yet. Uh, but we also are probably looking at, we could be looking at steganography. So there might be something hidden in this image. Um, let's see. Well, we'll come back to this. Um, dear, 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 dear. Oh, we don't need the map. I don't know if it'll actually have anything. Yeah. Standard stream and security stream. Um, we don't need hashes. Better not be any malware on this disk. All right, it's not quite open yet. So what I was hoping to see is like, um, oops, uh, Office has tons of metadata on it. Um, open Office, or at least this Open Office document, apparently does not. So that's too bad. I was hoping to get some metadata off of it. Um, all of these files are old. All right. Um, is there anything in other? Um, let's check out some of these books. Right, we will add a local disk. 
and H. Uh, time zone. Let's keep in. Um, let's keep the time zone here in uh, UTC because. Well, no, because we do know that this was supposed to be in Poland, right? So let's go with uh, with the I don't know where exactly, but we'll we'll go with Warsaw. We'll keep the local time in in that for now, I guess. Um, okay, and we'll run. Oh yeah, we'll run the full Monty on this. Why not? All right, so while that's going, let's grab these books and take a look at those. Dropping them in file and analyzer here. All right, uh, let's stack these. And let's start, yeah, let's start with Wizard of Oz, huh? Finish that. You see down here, intake is beginning. So that's going to run. It's it's only four gigs, um, but we're going to... It shouldn't take too long, so we're going to let that run. You can see it's already starting to populate, though. Uh, <clears throat> public host Gutenberg HTML. So these were downloaded from the Gutenberg project, which makes sense. They do have rebooks. Um, let's stagger these. Lord Jim, Book Moby. I mean, these look like legit books to me. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, normally the first thing that we would do um, also is create a copy of the evidence. We would not work with the original VHD. Um, but again, I'm being lax in my procedures here on account of this just being a game, you know. Yeah, these are from the Gutenberg Project. Gutenberg Project. Um, Polish. I don't know. Speak Polish, so Polish. Um, there's some. Oh, this is the diary. All right, well, let's open the diary then. Um, oh, this is 2018. Okay, it's weird. There's a mixture of files on here. Um, which is another thing. Hold on, let me uh, change this view to details. And so this game was released in 2021, and they said that uh, this incident happened between the end of May, or sometime in the end of May. The investigators were out there on June 6th, and they said it was about a week later. All of these files on this disk are older than that, like way older than that. Before we open up the diary, let's take a look at some of these pictures. Um, our most recent one is the end of May. Um, Martina Mirovska. Canon EOS. Yeah. How come I don't have the image view? Where's the image view? Oh, because it's a CR2 file. Decode error. Well, that's interesting. In Fran, you can't open it. Let's make a copy of this. Oh, that's right. It's uh, read only. Um, I'm going to use the game directory here as my evidence. No, let's, we should actually go to the, there we go. And export, copy, paste. Okay. 
Change the file format. Mm. All right, we're gonna need to open that up in a different image viewer. Uh, yeah, autopsy is still running. Anyways, so uh, we have a name. Uh, we have a uh, camera make model. We have timestamp. So let's uh, add to our notes here. Oh, come on. Copy text. Ah, for God's sake. Is that right? Martina Mirovska, yes. I'm not sure about that make and model of camera. And an EOS 7D, is that an actual camera? It is. So it's a fancy camera, too. That's expensive. Holy moly. Well, this one's actually only 300 bucks, but still. So we have, uh, this is, you know, not a uh, cheap camera. It's um, expensive, uh, not a phone. So that tells us something about our subject here. They're some kind of shutter bug. Text to clipboard. Paste. This is the most recent activity we've discovered so far. So we know that she was taking pictures or somebody took a picture at this time. Um, firmware version is useful um, because it can help us to in point well first of all it can be useful for discovering bugs if there's a bug in the firmware i don't need firmware twice all right uh, it can also help us to date the image okay i don't have visual image data right now because of the f image file formats, but we will get there eventually. Not seeing any EXIF data. A, C a CR2 is an unusual file format. It must be proprietary for Canon. All right, let's check out one of the JPEGs then. Our most recent JPEG is this. And we do have the image. We have XF data. So uh, this is not in Poland. When was this taken? Um, about 14 days prior. Doesn't look like China either, though. Yeah, okay. So it is Poland, but this is some like Chinese festival or something. Because I'm looking at the characters, and these are, I believe they're Chinese. And... The address in the background here, 13 Majas Vij. Again, I don't speak Polish, but that's clearly a Polish address. And here we have something, something V Polska or Polska? Not sure. Plus, the architecture looks more Polish than Chinese. The crowd looks more Polish than Chinese. So we have some kind of maybe immigrant festival or protest or something. Exif data. This was taken with a Samsung GTI copy um, both to clipboard. A Samsung. And it's a Samsung Galaxy S3? Samsung Galaxy. That's an ad. Yeah, Galaxy S3. Phone, Samsung. 
Alex C. God damn it. S. Three. Okay. And software version. God's sake. I think I've never done this before. So, okay. Uh, we have. We do have. Okay, so we do have GPS data. Um, let's check that out. Map. It'll take a couple seconds for it to load. If it well, if it doesn't, then that's fine. I'll just find it myself. But how's autopsy coming? Still analyzing. It doesn't look like it's gonna do it. So we're gonna need to find those coordinates ourselves. That's not the right window. That's the right window. Use Google Maps. All right, we have, yep, Warsaw, Poland. And we have a date, the town original data generation. And this date, time. Okay, let's do a street view. This is sort of an odd. Uh, we see the monument, I think, in the background. I think that we're off just a tiny bit. I think that what we're seeing is actually this monument. So let's drop the street view there and take a look around. Yeah, there it is. That is our monument right there um so this is Zygismund's column okay so we have a location and a time it's unfortunately 14 days before the incident but that's something and that's still chugging along, so let's grab another image. Um, I would really like to get XF data off of these. Oh, here we have a JPEG that's a little bit closer to the date in question, so let's use that. All right, uh, first the image, it is Flowies. Um, I don't know what kind of Flowies, so let's do a Reverse image search. See what kind of flowies those be. It's not that big of a file. Okay. A buttercup, it seems. I don't know about that. Think that they have misidentified some flowers. Oh, but we have this exact. M oh, this is for the Steam page. Um, somebody asking in 
Korean um, what this is. Let's go to visually similar images, because that doesn't look like a buttercup to me. Um, I guess it could be. Here, let me actually open this up in an image viewer so I can get a good look at that. Okay, uh, that's not a buttercup. If that's a buttercup, then that's not this flower. Okay. Um, plant ID. I think I usually use plantid.net or plant.id. Is that what I normally use? Uh, yeah, this looks familiar. This is normally what I use. Um, dear diary, pick um, this one here. Um, I, it's not too certain here, honestly. It doesn't really seem to be. Um, normally the site that I use asks me to identify the flower and the leaves. I think I use a different site. Um, I want to say I use plantid.net. Oh, I'll identify plantnet. There it is. That's what I use. <clears throat> This is what I normally use, yes. Uh, and here's a pretty good reason why I do it, because clearly it is the best. It seems to have found it right away. Yellow alfalfa. Yes, that's the stuff. That is indeed a match. All right, so we have... Let's go back to file analyzer. Let's grab the date time. That's the wrong freaking window. All right, we don't have the time yet, but this is going to be yellow. L alpha. Scientific name there, just for shits and grins. We have a different phone. Who has multiple phones, for God's sake? Uh, this one was used... 13th, 2018... Phone two used May twentieth, twenty eighteen. This is an Apple phone SE. So, oops. software is eleven point three. Okay, that's. Unfor I hate, I hate multiple phones. Uh, taken with back camera on iPhone SE. Oops, I'm going off the screen here. Okay. And I'm going to move this. This is more recent up here. And I'm going to space there. Okay. All right, what else we got here? We do have latitude, longitude again. So maps, google.com, copy value. Uh, north. Okay. It's in the middle of nowhere. Yes, it does seem to be in the middle of nowhere. Okay. 
Um, so this is here. Is this near Warsaw? Where are we? Here's Lublin. It's uh, way outside of Warsaw. Way, way outside. So we're going to call this here, and we'll say it's near Zelizna. Near Zelizna. Okay. Yellow alfalfa. Taking the back camera. Let's see how close can I get with street view? Not very. Not at all unlike the countryside in Wisconsin, if I'm being honest. It looks very much like Wisconsin in May. So we would be somewhere over in this direction, it seems. Very much out of the middle of nowhere on the end of this road. Try, see if I can actually see that road. Uh, yeah, so right, right down there, right past this somewhere. All right, so this is only a week before the incident, but a week is still a long time. So we are not where we... We're, we're getting closer, but we're not where we ought to be at all. They do an autopsy at 95%, so we're just about there. Um, we could probably start walking through that. Yellow alfalfa. See, I knew I knew it wasn't a buttercup because we have yellow alfalfa here in Wisconsin. I've seen it a thousand times before. Oh, look at this. What else do we have in this picture? Yeah. Is this poplar fuzz? It doesn't look like poplar fuzz. It doesn't look like dandelion fuzz either. It must be poplar fuzz. All right. And... Uh, let's see what else we got here. A tiff. Let's check out this one from the 11th. Oops, that's not file analyzer. That's file analyzer. A cat. Un gato. Taken with that Samsung again. I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave it off of our report for now. Just because it doesn't seem I mean we are we are like more than two weeks prior to the incident, so it may not be forensically relevant. I mean we got a couple of people, the shawl, woman's got a tattoo. This is definitely some man. Short brown hair, ring on her thumb, bone in the back pocket. Same Samsung. Hanoi. All right. Well, Hanoi is Vietnam. Seems like we have a mixture of Vietnamese gentlemen, perhaps, along with some Caucasian gentlemen. Um, there's some kind of industrial setting here. These are older pictures that appear to be mounted in um, a scrapbook. It doesn't look like it's like wartime or anything. We have the same Caucasian gentleman here. Same here. Um... So it doesn't I, I i it's an industrial setting i don't know you know one from another it doesn't look like i mean this is clearly a factory or something of some kind it doesn't appear to be a ship so there's no nothing here i, mean, I suppose it could be and this one um lilac bushes it seems taken again with that Samsung. So, um, don't 
here seems to be primary phone. Uh, perhaps new phone wired between 513 and 520. So they might have upgraded or something. What are we working on right now? Unallocated space. All right. Well, while that's running, what else can we do here? I guess we could finally open up the diary itself. Um, or we could start cracking these. I think let's I think let's start cracking those. Oops, that's not what I want. I don't know. It knew what I wanted to do anyway. Okay, let's see. Where is my move this over here? See if I can locate John the Ripper. I'm gonna move first of all. Let's move these. Let's copy these over to the case. Yeah, see, we see our two files. I wonder if I can open them up and forensically. Let's try it. Um... No, it doesn't seem like I can. That's too bad. Um, okay, John the Ripper. That's where I was at. Okay, so I moved the files over there to this. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna down. I don't know how many copies of JTR I have on my computer already, but whatever. Pardon me while I yawn. And let's grab a copy of Rock You, although I don't know if that will work, since if we are dealing with somebody who is um, Polish, we may need to get a Polish list. So let's see if we can find one Polish password list. Or I suppose I'll just take a word list. Um, Oxford University word lists. Polish. All right, let's first make sure that this is indeed rock you. Yep, sure it is. Okay, let's extract John. And are you an archive too? What the fuck are you? What is this Z file shit? <laughs> Words.publish. Jesus Christ. What the hell am I working with here? Alright, that is a list of Errant Polish words. All right, so I think between the two, we probably got a word list we can work with here. Uh, how are you doing, autopsy? 96%, so you're getting there. All right, so let's switch to... 
No, not. Uh, there we go. Oops, not. I'm in Windows, dummy. Okay. Uh, CD export. There's John. Uh, let's move. Um, let's copy these to our render for convenience sake. All right, and then let's go to there and then run. I'm in Windows. All right, so let's uh, zip to John file one. Uh, I'm going to need to type that out. Hmm, what? Um, hash one. Okay, that's a hash. Let's try it with two. Hash two. Two. Hash three. File. There's hash one, two, and three. They seem to be things that are stuff. Ooh, hash, what's up with hash three? Oh, there you go. It's a long, it's a big one. It's a big one. All right, so now we'll John, that's not you. So we will John that uh, using, I'm going to need to copy my word lists too, aren't I? It, it. Runder for convenience sake. Let's start with Rock You, I guess. Um, probably should have had the parameter for the PK. Let's see if it. Let's see if it gets it. And while that is running, let's put that here. And let's check out autopsies at 98%. All right, let's start digging into autopsy here a little bit. All right, so we have several email addresses here. Any of them look legitimate? Um, we have some Polish addresses here. Um, but it looks like all false positives to me. It's always harder to tell um, because, you know, in a, in a different language, for all I know, Gnubi may, well, I suppose that could be GB Nubi. That could be a name at eglaf.org. There's a couple of eglaf, but they seem to be associated with the EPUB addresses. So that's probably incidental, either incidental or false positives. Um, user content suspected. So we have the images. We have a lot of images here. Um, lots of them. Really. Um, it says that XF metadata exists for these CR2 files, but does it really? I don't think so. Canon EOS 7D. Oh, did I misspell her name before? I did. We Martina. Oh, it's almost done. 100%. Encryption detected. Yes, we already know those. Okay. John's done, but it doesn't look like it found it. Um... What format were those? PK zip, right? Yeah, PK zip. Oh, I also need to clean these up, don't I? Um, let's try.
Okay, zip. But damn it. Um, oh, there we go. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go back to export. Let's extract all. Yes, to there. One, two, three, two, three, four, five. Yep. That one was a brain buster. All right, we have a txt file. Put a dot at the start of the second password. All right. USB stick found in the grass, a forensic puzzle. Idea designed photo story development by uh, Marcin Boric Borkowski. English version, Carolina Hivalvarchik and Marcin Boric Borkowski. I'm from... I live in central Wisconsin, so I'm not completely unused to Polish names, but I'm sorry. I know that I'm going to just butcher these. I apologize. Um, introducing Mantis, Macias, Cole, I don't know how, I don't know how to do the Z and whatever this letter is called. I'm going to say Kolchowski as the CSI technician. Loved it, hated it. Feel free to share your thoughts at Facebook.com. Girls in the kitchen photo. Marta Martians a knitted triangle scarf featuring the photo. Oh, was that two women? I thought that was a, a man behind the scarf, but you know, they were hidden behind the scarf. Photos from Vietnam are the Zavadchik family photo archive. Any resemblance actually person? Okay, so this is just okay. Um that's fine with me. All right, let's go back and crack the second one. No, I don't need the show on this one. That goes by itself. Uh, and okay. And that is fast. So hash to show. Uh, I did not crack it. So um, it said to put a period at the start. So maybe that's what we need to do is just do extract and do period one, two, three, four, five. No, it's not. Okay. Um, then perhaps I missed something. Maybe there's a, a clue here or something somewhere. Uh, well, anyway, let's get back to, uh, still, still, not, what, we got some errors here. What does this say? Yeah, okay. I didn't run a hash set. It's encrypted. I encounter calculating the hash value from Erica Lust Films. What? Is there porn on this thing? What does it say on Steam for the, uh, reviews? Because I noticed that the reviews on this were mixed. really curious now because I'm having a good time um recommended very boring don't waste your time minimum specs toaster this was a game well I mean there's no soundtrack so that's not very fair who the fuck are you that Brit Rick that Brit Rick let me tell you something. I don't know who you are, but just the fact that you do this shit with your reviews leads me to believe that you are a pretentious ass. And I apologize if you're not, but you gotta fucking stop this. Who the fuck are you? Jesus Christ, man. Fun concept, not really a game. Detective work with a video, some photos and documents. Whatever, dude. You're not even judging it on the merits of what it is. Fuck off. That brick Rick. Don't, don't do this anymore. Just don't. 
The concept is cool, I like the idea, but as many of these reviews say, you have to, one, give it admin permissions, which is a security risk. Well, you do that with just about every goddamn game you download. Jesus Christ, I can't think of the last AAA title that I downloaded that didn't require that, and on top of that, you're using Steam, which does the same fucking shit. Idiot. Two, you have to install external software, plus it came with torrents for movies. That... My God. My God, dude. You have no idea what you're talking about. So what if it came with torrents for movies? And you would rather that they simulate File Explorer? I mean, you have... All right, there might be something valid in there, I guess. Um, I don't want it to do that. Um, but, like I said, I've done these scenarios before, so I'm okay with it. How do I... How do I... Get... No, 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 no. I don't want to see it bigger. I want it to go away. Um, it's weird. It's mostly negative. Well, anyway, let's get back to actually doing what we were doing. We'll come back to the reviews later. All right. Autopsy is done. Extension mismatch. Uh, let's see our two files. They are TIFF files, according to this. Um, XF metadata. Uh, all right, we do have these. Um, Canon EOS 7D. That's yep, the only metadata that we have on those CR2 files. Um, these are directories here that I didn't see before though so we got a lot of carved files as well let's start digging into those huh um as soon as autopsy catches up oh and uh while this is running let's do hash three All right, file system. Got some MP3s here. Uh, some incremental files for the diary. Um, we got Australia National Anthem. Okay. Did not have the pass for um what was I doing? Um oh right the hash files. Um I have the format right yeah the RPKs This one was a big one. Yeah. All right. So we didn't find it uh, with uh, Rock U for hash two or hash three. We do have a clue for hash two. It said to add a dot before the password. Um, there's still so much to to dig into, though. I'm not. I'm not really gonna do this um so we can see um documents and settings so this is she was using a pre-7 windows machine for this weird um run as far as i can there's another document here there's some incremental files for it uh that we haven't found yet more mp3s led zeppelin and so on um, uh, Spatina, Mud, Jackson. I'm not really interested in the MP3s. Decent taste in music, though. Edith PF.
Got some doc files here. All right, let's see if we can, uh, if we have those carved. Documents. Let's start with PDFs. They are in Polish. Of course they are. Why wouldn't they be? This looks like instruction on documents. Joy of sex. Okay. And yeah, I don't speak Polish, so some of these might be losing their significance just from glancing at them. Um, how about office documents? Looks like we will need to dig into some of these. I suppose it's probably about time we open the diary, huh? Okay, dear diary, I decided to write in English so that it doesn't get rusty, even if this means repeating my own mistakes. It's not the best idea to start May with the death of your laptop, is it? I turned Asus on in the morning. The hard drive made a strange noise, the login screen appeared, and then bam, the blue screen of death. And now it's just dark when I turn it on, it won't even let me load the defaults. This is bad. I hate typing on my PC keyboard in, and my old ThinkPad. A has Windows XP. Okay, that explains the documents and settings. Uh, B has no battery, so I depend on the nearest electrical socket. And C, which is the worst, it has no Wi-Fi connection. I've lost the USB adapter somewhere, so I can't go online, which means no internet and no access to the PC hard drive. I don't even have an Ethernet cable to connect to the LAN adapter. I guess I'll be using an extension cord right in bed, and I'll be storing my diary on a USB stick so that I can access it wherever I want. There's a good side to that. It was actually planning. I was actually planning to start writing my diary by month, so the fact that this fuck up happened today is quite convenient. I'll just start a new file. Okay. Uh, IDM. I think add min XP. Oh, and, um, okay, um, Uh, heat in the sun, or brutal in the morning, then it grew humid, but I managed, okay, so I want to get a little bit closer here to the incident itself, let's start, uh, I spent three hours on Duolingo, this is May 3rd, May 4th, 5th, let's go all the way to the bottom, May 10th is our last, wow, that's, that's weeks before the incident, Special circumstances embodied by two 10-year-old girls blocking the footbridge forced me to change my usual jogging route. I ran a CW circuit instead of the usual CCW. They were gone by the time I got back to the footbridge. What was left of uh, them was the writing on the concrete plate, RIP, Youth and Innocence. I spent half a day scanning. I'm on a roll. I'd rather not be a good listener. Maybe the people wouldn't... Then people wouldn't dump their problems on me. I called her ex-neighbor Tozia because today is her name day. She told me about her grandson when he was born. That mother Casca lived with Tozia, so I used to see her with a pram almost every day. Hmm. Okay. This is too far away from the incident, really, to be likely to be relevant, but there might be information about our subject in here that we could add to our profile. Um, problems with the cats. Whatever. Okay. Uh, we're going to need to carve some of these out and take a closer look at them. Plain text. Martina. And it's in freaking Polish, so...
Martina, ask this magician of yours if anything can be recovered from these files. If not, we're in the ass. <laughs> Out of the button into the fucking... <laughs> okay. All right, we got a couple of archives here that aren't um, apparently... These aren't archives, these are just text files. Um, money stuff. And nothing here. Let's extract this and see if we can open it up. Autopsy's really chugging here. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. How long have I been recording? Oh shit, I've been recording for an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, I should just do this in multiple parts. Yeah, yeah, let's extract this archive and um, see if we can open it up, and then we will end this part. It is not actually a zip file. Come on. Fuck's sake. I swear to God. All right. File analyzer tells us, tells us that it is images. Tells us it's an archive. What? Did filesignatures.net go down? You gotta be kidding me. Oh, okay. There it is. What the hell was that about then? I don't know. Maybe I entered the wrong URL or something. Uh, 50 signature. 50. Or B L three four. Jar yeah, it's a zip file. Hmm. Then why can no open? Open with choose another app. Okay, can open it up in seven zip. Uh, oh, it's just an iBooks thing. Yeah, it's just an iBooks thing. I don't really care about that so much. All right, let's call that part one. I'll be back with a part two. I, I'm I'm intrigued, and and while the kiddos on Steam may not appreciate this for what it is. Um, I do. Although I I can understand from their perspective, like it's Steam, they want to play a game. This isn't really a game. This is a uh, this is a forensic scenario. This is corpus. Right? This is exactly the kind of stuff I give my students. Exactly the kind of stuff that I look at and have to do for certifications. Um, so I'm not bothered by people who are like, "This isn't really a game." I get that. That's fine. What I am bothered by uh, is shit like this. Not very interesting and can be dangerous, considering it essentially installs a virtual disk on your HDD SSD. Number one, what the fuck is this? You already don't know what you're talking about. And number two, compared to the rest of the shit that you get off of Steam, this is absolutely no... This might even be more secure than that, because what you're doing when you get a game from Steam is you are accepting files for a download, and you're installing them on your actual hard drive. In this case, you're getting a virtual hard disk. It's like mounting... Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that it couldn't be used in a dangerous way. Of course it could, but it's certainly not more dangerous than what you're already getting on Steam or Epic or anywhere else for that matter. No more dangerous than you get when you, you know, get a disc from a friend and you use it to install. So this is dumb and you're dumb. Um, this is a weird game all around. You only need an EXE for the game so you can unlock the achievements by entering the zip passwords there. Wait, there's achievements? <laughs> Wait, you're getting paid? Um, Is that what that was before? 
hold on. Let me let me go back to the game files. Um, there it is. Uh. So do I? Do I actually like? I didn't. I mean, I saw, I saw the splash screen, obviously, but, but what? Well, that nothing. Nothing happened. Okay. Um. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Okay, I'll have to check that out later because I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but anyway, literally asked for admin person I saw USB, which is fine by me. I'm not necessarily plagued by the paranoia of the possibility of insecurity and the risks of it. There might have been blah 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 blah. Um, and the EPUB files. Are... How is that even legal? You're not promoting torrenting by putting torrent files in there. You're setting up realistic corpora. People torrent. Okay, you're going to find them. Dev, the fuck were you trying to accomplish? Let me guess. You wanted to emulate somebody's USB file, somebody who uses torrent, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna say... Oh my god. This, this starts out fine, and then it goes super dumb. Apparently, her story is also a forensic experience, which the description on Steam did say that this was a game along those lines. First of all, why did you feel a virtual USB was needed? All of this could have been done in-game, as long as you know how to execute it. This is... this is Because it recreates a realistic scenario. This is what forensic work is like. You don't get a little package, you get a USB drive. Oh, this is... I don't think they really understand or appreciate what this game is. And it's just too bad, because I've never seen anything like this on Steam before. And I get that it's not for everybody, but this is... This is my jam, and this is exactly what I was hoping to find, so... Uh... The developer's notes literally start with watch this other movie first. The payoff of the game is a quote about how real life does not tie together as neatly as stories do. This is not a game. This is a developer that likes some literature movies. This year, these people are so dumb. Steam is almost as bad as YouTube comments these days. Um, I am going to leave a positive review uh, because my experience, even with just the first hour of playing this game, has been positive, and I am going to come back for a part two. You can count on that. So I will see you there.